Chapter 5 Until Friend's Departure It's been two weeks since Sui Mei and his friends were summoned into this world and tasked with destroying the demon lord. Even now, Reiji is still undergoing training and will leave in a few days. While the training is steadily progressing, Sui Mei is in a room reading books. Most of the genres are varied and almost everything he can get his hands on. The reason is of course to collect information about this world. He still remembers freshly the other day when they were told that they can't return home. And so, they are forced to live here. Even though he hated being summoned before, he doesn't care now, or more likely, he doesn't have the time to care. There are things he must do now, no matter what. That is, of course, collecting information. The majority of the books he's studying include law, unwritten law, culture, fundamental knowledge, and the existence of the previous world. As mentioned before, they have to live here now. Resisting blending into this world's lifestyle will only bring trouble. It's unknown whether it's caused by the hero summoning or not, but they can understand this world's language. Because of that, he can read the books. The information he has collected here has become quite a lot. And then, the book Sui Mei is reading right now is about a hero who succeeded God's power and defeated the dragon that plunged the world into darkness. It seems this hero's story is an orthodox one that is widely known. While taking a breather, Sui Mei is reading this book. It seems he became interested and didn't realize that he kept turning the pages until he finished it. Eventually, the hero destroyed the dragon and returned home and brought happiness to the world. It sure is a happy ending. Hero ha, huh, Sui Mei. Muttered Sui Mei while closing the book. Well, setting aside this hero, the current hero right now is training with Mizuki who insisted upon going with him. They are now undergoing the training of Estelle's Imperial Guards, Knight Captain and the Imperial Sorcerer. They got sword and combat training from the Knight Captain and all kinds of magic from the Imperial Sorcerer. Even though he felt that two weeks was unreasonable, he kept his mouth shut, in a good way. Ha, Sui Mei. While thinking of Reiji, Sui Mei sighed. Sometimes he can see the training from the window. He got the info from Reiji and Mizuki, who visited him twice a day. From the info, though little, it seems harsh. Reiji was just a normal human in the previous world. Of course, upon receiving sudden war training, he got beaten up. But, it seems this only applied for the first two days. On the third day, he was already able to fight on par with the night captain and able to handle multiple opponents. Sui Mei didn't know if this is because of the hero's blessing or not, but the growth rate is unbelievable. If he were to put it, it's like a sponge. Not how a sponge absorbs water, but how a sponge pumps out water. Seeing that, of course, he felt his efforts were being denied, and felt sad. That's cheating, definitely. Sui Mei. It's remarkable, even in magic. Reiji can do what took Sui Mei two years in just three days. Only three days. Sui Mei didn't even want to look at it anymore. Mu, Sui Mei. Suddenly, Sui Mei heard footsteps and felt a magic presence. It seems they are coming this way, it's probably visitors. And the visitors are. It seems it was Reiji and two others. The two others are Mizuki and Titania who wants to help him all the time. This causes Mizuki to cling on to Reiji. Noticing that they are coming, Sui Mei quickly goes to the desk and conceals everything there with magic. The Sui Mei right now is always secluded in this room. Everyone thinks that he's always sleeping alone here. He limits contact with others to the minimum to conceal his identity. It's because if he's in contact with other people, the risk of getting caught is higher. Of course, he never attended the party on the second day. He always gets his food sent here anyway. He only leaves this room to go to the library, to the summoning room, to secretly check on Reiji, and, of course, the toilet. It's a natural thing to do conceal his identity. He didn't want to get his power exploited. He also didn't want Reiji to know. 
and he also got more freedom this way anyway. In return, the castle's opinion of him has dropped drastically. It's because he made a speech back then in the audience room to persuade Reiji from becoming the hero. And then he always hold up here. He's confident that the king and Titania are making fun of him. Swaymei doesn't care because it's a cover. And of course, he wants it to continue like that. While thinking that, Swaymei crawls up to the bed and Reiji's voice can be heard. Morning Swaymei, wake up yet? Reiji. Ah, oh, come in. Swaymei. Excuse me. Mizuki. Excuse me. Reiji. Swaymei woke up and, as usual, they sit in their respective chairs. Then, what happened today? Swaymei. Eh? That was sudden, Swaymei. Reiji. Somehow, you have a different atmosphere today. Swaymei. Ha ha ha, as expected, I'm busted? Reiji. I guess. Swaymei. Reiji is laughing, embarrassed, and Swaymei is nodding. He noticed something was different when Reiji came in. Even if his face is bleeding a bit, Swaymei can feel that Reiji experienced a good thing. Then, Reiji asked. I learned body strengthening magic today, wanna see? Reiji. Ho! Show me. Swaymei. I see, that's the reason. It seems he's happy having learned a new magic. And I understand it well. People want to test it when they acquire new magic. Reiji is stretching his body and loosening up. It is body strengthening magic, it strengthens the whole body at the same time. Stretching like this is essential. Here I go. Reiji. Then, Reiji spreads magic to his body and surges it up in an instant without chanting. Burn boost. Reiji. When Reiji casts the magic, his body is suddenly covered in flame. He's now even stronger than he was when he was summoned. Oh. Swaymei. Swaymei lets out a voice of admiration upon seeing this. The execution is excellent. He handles the process very well. Even though it's not really efficient, but to do this in two months is something admirable. It looks like this magic is of the fire attribute. His power is amplified. Also, the wind attribute will hasten movement, the water attribute will smooth movement, and the earth attribute will harden the body. Swaymei is analyzing Reiji's body strengthening magic. Titania is entranced by this sight and approaches him. As expected, Reiji Sama is awesome. Titania. Ah ha ha. Thank you, Tia. Reiji. Said Reiji while smiling, and that name is like a pet name. When did they get this close? Mizuki is pissed a bit seeing Titania. Tia, isn't that a bit too close? Mizuki. Isn't it fine, Mizuki? Mizuki is always close to him, isn't it fine to let me this time? Titania. Eh? And no. I'm not close to him. Mizuki. That's not true. Mizuki is always close to Reiji-sama. It's unfair. Titania. The topic was about Reiji's strengthening magic, but there's a spark between them. Hmm, Reiji is quite cool, huh, Swaymei? Eh? That's right. This magic is convenient, I like it. Reiji. It unexpectedly looks quite cool, Swaymei. This is Suemei's true opinion. It looks like dragon's flame. The impact shown on the other party is obvious. Be it admiration or fear. It's quite an advantage. Thinking that, somehow Mizuki turns to Reiji, not me. I, I can do it too. Mizuki. Is that so? As expected, Mizuki is working hard as well. Reiji. Um, well, yeah, Mizuki. Swaymei has a blank look hearing the response. 
It looks like because of Titania's actions, Mizuki can no longer see anyone besides Reiji. Kukukuku, Suemei. W.H. What's the matter, Suemei-kun? Mizuki. Ah, oh, it's nothing, good luck. Suemei. Yeah, I won't lose. Mizuki. When he thinks about the talk that one of them will become the demon lord, it seems impossible watching this situation. After that, I try to ask again. Then, what else? Suemei. Eh? Well, various things, Reiji. Reiji answers that while averting his eyes, it seems this is the cause of what Suemei felt. What's wrong, Reiji-sama? Titania. Eh? It's nothing. Reiji. Oju-sama, is there anything strange that happened? Suemei. Eh? I don't think anything happened. More like that Reiji-sama got another cool thing. Titania. It seems the princess didn't lie. Then, what made Reiji like this? Why is he trying to deceive us? I asked Titania the details. That is? Suemei. Eh? That is, Titania. Reiji tried to stop her, but Titania continued, trying to brag. All magicians from Estelle's guild specialists came to practice with Reiji-sama. Titania. And Magician Guild, huh, Suemei? Magician Guild. Though I haven't researched the details, it's true that it exists. And because of that, everyone gathered to welcome them. Titania. The specialists are probably the executives there. Is it that rare? Suemei. Yes. That's because they have their own business. Titania. That's why it's rare for them to gather. The various specialists are more interesting. By the way, what do you mean by various? Suemei. Fire, water, wind, earth, thunder, wood, light. They are the best of them. They can easily surpass our magicians and they each have their own emperor nickname. Like the Emperor of Fire or Emperor of Light. Titania. Suemei. Is it fine? Emperor is a great name even in Japan. Even though there might be error since the language here has been converted into Japanese, it's still great. Suemei-sama, are you interested? Titania. Then, who won? Suemei. Of course, it was Reiji-sama's victory. Titania. Titania happily brags about it. And then, he got a title from the guildmaster. Titania. A title? Suemei. A title is something that represents a person's achievements, strength, or features. Of course, this is only in fantasy. Reiji is embarrassed and tries to change the topic. Isn't it fine not to tell him? Reiji. But, seeing Reiji like that, Mizuki snickers. Fu-fu-fu. Mizuki. What's wrong, Mizuki? Suemei. No, it's nothing. Mizuki. Then, princess, what's the title? Suemei. Suemei, please, Reiji. Because he conquered all elements, he is called the supreme ruler of all elements. Titania. The moment she says that, the room is silent. But, Suemei can't hold it. Buhohoho, Suemei. Suemei-sama. Titania. Ah, supreme ruler, of, all elements, ah, I can't take it, help me, ha 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 ha. Suemei. Titania is confused as to why he's laughing. Reiji can only shake his head and Mizuki is laughing too. While Suemei is laughing, Reiji says. See? I told you. Reiji. H.M. Why? Receiving a title from the guildmaster is a great thing. Why are Suemei-sama and Mizuki-sama laughing? Titania. 
Bubud, it's supreme ruler of all elements you know. Just hear it, it's got no sense, it's got. Ah, my stomach hurts. Fwa ha 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 ha. Sway me. Sway me, please, stop it, ragey. The laughter echoes and the story ends here. North Building. Nothing strange. Eiji, with the military boots, is patrolling. Eiji is checking the last room at the North Building. That's right. That night, Eiji was patrolling. This is the daily task every night. The job is to defend the castle at night when everyone is sleeping. Camellia is different between day and night. At day, it's bright. At night, it's completely different. Usually, they have candles, but as to boost the economy, now, it's all not lit up. The only light is the one in Eiji's hand. And Eiji has to go patrolling in the darkness. Nobody wants this job since it's creepy. Eiji is forced to do this job and has to remember every nook and cranny. I hope it'll end soon, Eiji. Anyway, it would be stupid if anyone tried to invade this place with the hero in it. The king himself issued Eiji to strengthen the security. Eiji also once saw the hero's training. It's very harsh. The hero Reiji fought against the knight captain and now he can defeat many men easily. So, even though it's the hero, they are afraid and want to strengthen security, since their best men have been defeated. Though, Eiji saw this as unreasonable. That time, Eiji saw a human figure. Who? Eiji. Eiji heard the sound of metal and immediately turned the candle to the source. Is there anyone there? Eiji. There's no response. What's left is only the spooky room mage's use. Eiji has been here before. There was nothing strange. But, back then, there was a metal statue. Peter? Is that you? Stop the bad prank. Eiji. Eiji anxiously called the name of his friend that usually pulls pranks. He tried to look ahead, but it's all painted black and he can't hear his friend's usual laughter. Then, the similar gashin sound is heard again. Eiji's back is trembling. Could it be? An intruder? Even his friend wouldn't go this far. Eiji wouldn't know where it got the info from, but it might be a demon trying to kill the hero. Eiji drew his sword and slowly approached. Eiji also prepared a flute to call reinforcements in the worst case. And then. What? Hmph, there's nothing. A.G. It's only the statue in front of the room. Well, there's no way a demon would be here anyway. It's only natural. In the first place, there's no way anything would be crawling in the castle at night, other than A.G. Having confirmed that, A.G. felt tired and went to bed. Whoa, that was close, Swayme. Swayme waved his hand in front of the sleeping Eiji and felt relieved. He never thought he'd meet a guard here. The guard is not a magician, just a normal human. He should not be able to get caught practicing magic here, though he didn't expect anyone to be awake. In the first place, the source of the issue was the armor beside him. No, no, to think they left an automaton here. There was nothing before, Swayme. For safety, Swayme took another glance at the armor. Automata are golems that have imitations of built-in organic functions. They can be programmed to perform automated actions. Like androids. It's one of the mysteries of Hebrew and Kabbalah in the previous world. There's no technique there to create it. Setting that aside. When Swayme touched it, it was disassembled and became scraps. Loud noises were created, but everybody was sleeping, so no one came. Swayme sighed. The first noise was when he got near the armor, and the second one was when he destroyed it. But, it sure is quite well made. I've never seen something like this before coming here. It's like it's not something the people here created, Swayme. But, where did they get this? 
When he came here, he realized its existence. He noticed the risks. This is quite well made. The automaton absorbs magic from nearby intruders. It's a good counter against magic and physical attacks. It also has a sword which makes it aggressive and powerful. Cool and cruel. But, that girl, seriously, what she's thinking? Just because this is inside the castle, she did something like this. She's got no sense of responsibility. Sway me. He complained to the non-existent Felminia. Even if they are both magicians. To think that she'd prepare a trap like this. Where's the service they boast? Now that the great me has come, I won't show any mercy. Ah. I guess it's natural for a mage, sway me. That's right. Magicians are magicians. You can target their research, and in return, they will try to kill you. It's common sense here. Though he doesn't know that for sure. He looked again to the remains of the armor. It's all right if it's Felminia, but it's bad if anyone else finds it and makes ruckus. K, let's fix it, sway me. Magic surged from his feet. A red circle was created below him. The magic circle rotated and became bigger. After connecting several strings, it stabilized. And then. Renovatio redivivus, sway me. Rather than a repair, it's more like returning it to its previous state. The circle separated into two from below the armor. It rotated and flew up. The parts returned back to their original places. When the magic circle reached the top, the armor was back again. Good. Just like before. Not good, not bad. Sway me. Bragging a little about his magic, he tapped the automaton. It can't move anymore. Since the magic inside is already destroyed, this is nothing but a wreck shaped like the automaton. Swayme entered the room the automaton was guarding, it was another room other than the archive room. That's right. It's the summoning room. The purpose was to analyze the summoning circle and find a way to reverse it. If that can't be done, he just has to make it himself. And now, he's rummaging through the summoning research book. I want to return. I have a duty to my father. To achieve it, it's best to return there with the research results, magic items, and research materials. Even though he's sure he can do anything here if given the time, he doesn't want to waste anything. He doesn't know if he can make it there in time. Time is scarce. That's why the top priority is to return home. That's right, and the other reason is. They both also want to return right, sway me. Said Swayme with a faint voice, while looking up the ceiling. Swayme knew that Reiji sometimes looked up at the sky. Swayme knew that he had lingering affection for the people he left there. He also knew that Mizuki was always sobbing alone in her room, wanting to be at the side of her loved ones, despite the fear, to stop the loneliness. While thinking that, something came up in Swayme's heart. He couldn't describe it, it was something hot. That morning he was supposed to meet his family. Those people that he can't meet again. Embracing the sadness and sorrow. He knew he would have to say goodbye someday, but as long there is hope, he won't give up. That's why he learned magic from his father, to overcome anything no matter how unreasonable. This is not like me, well, I guess I have to work hard. Sway me. He was determined. He can't take it back once he said it. That's why he said it. Since he won't be going with them, he swore to find alternatives. While he's determined, a magic presence could be felt. Even if they tried to hide it, it's a human presence. No. It was not a normal person. It was Felminia Stingray. She stood out in front of the automaton and then came in. It seems she saw the open door. He knew she was tailing him and purposefully left a trail. But to think she was this persistent. Maybe she's observing me. 
she peeked for a while and then left. Then. The bait is effective, next is the timing stage, huh, Swayme? That's right. This is an appropriate punishment for dogs who like to sniff. They also intend to punish me anyway. In return, their surprised faces will be funny. <laughs>